Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the kindly old Captain Strange Life Show, Comics and Collectibles. Coming to you all the way from Ballback, Lebanon. Speaking of Ballback, can I have my Ballback? Well, at least I got one of my balls back. And it landed right where it belongs. Here, here, here. Oh, the hands are out of place. Can't have that going on. Me primate's getting there. Well, actually, it's not a primate. It's my ape friend. Yes, it is. He's getting a massage. He's been having a headache lately. He's all nice and furry. Hmm. Oh. Gotta have my tea. It's the season for tea. Or should I say tay? Like my mother always used to call it. Tay. And I got a backup too, right there. Only thing bad about it is it's got a duck in it. Decided to take a bath. Hmm. Get out of there. All right, enough of that. Where was I? You know, the last couple of videos, my right during the middle of a video or towards the end of it everything shut off and I get a screen that says something went wrong and it goes right back to my home screen and I go back into the uh, where I was making the video and nothing's there it's all gone so I don't know I did some uh, updated everything and we'll see what happens and I I did so many clips I don't know what I showed anymore I'm not sure if I know there's so much here I, I tried to go through it so I don't show doubles but I'm probably showing doubles of everything I got so frustrated I can't even remember what it was I showed Meany, stupid. now this I know I showed on graphic man I don't know if I showed it here but this is jungle comics uh, 71 from 1945. Uh, I'm not sure who did the cover, but it could be Morris Whitman. He did many of these covers. What a nice bondage cover. Not that I love women being in bondage. It's just the, the art, you know, itself. And those crocodilias. Woo! So wicked. So wicked indeed. So I'll have to put these here to make certain that I know that they get filed away. Now, I know I showed some Lois Lane in the last couple of videos. And I don't know... If I showed these or not, I I do know some of the lowest lanes that I showed are in that box. Only trouble is I didn't put them all in that box. I put them in a pile right here, then it got mixed with other stuff, and now I don't know what the hell I did. But I think I might have shown this. I'm pretty sure it's got the rose and the thorn, lowest lane, 107, and the cover. I put the cover on there. Uh, what the hell? I put the 
cover number on there and no year, no artist. So now I'll have to see. 15 cents, maybe. It could be 69, 70, I don't. 71. God darn it. And it doesn't say who the artist is. No, not in the cover. Uh, pencils, Werner Roth. But uh, I think, if I remember correctly, this is a cover by, according to Grand Comics Database, this cover is, was by Dick Giordano. But don't take my word on that. My memory is not that cool. But it's got the rose and the thorn. Shocker. Alrighty, what's this? Did I show this? Brave and a Bowl 151. I'm a, you know, I got all these at half price at my store. This was $5. I paid $2.50 for it. Jim Apparel cover 1981. Yeah, I think I did show this because I remember talking about to, uh, uh, Wally Wood's wife, uh, Tatiana, Tatiana Wood, that was Wally Wood's first wife, she did the uh, inking on here, Batman 186, um, with the Joker, I think this was a Murphy Anderson cover, again, I write the cover number and there are no data and what's wrong with me. There, I got the cover at nine, nine, uh, 96, 1971. And... Don't know who did the cover. Usually I write that down, but uh, here's uh, 76 from 1968, and that's Neil Adams. And now, uh, I know I showed these, but I'm going to show them in a sequence now, because I rebagged and boarded them, except for this, because it looks pretty good. Sergeant Fury and his Holly Commandos King Size. Number five, but I think that's 1960. Hmm. Let me see. Didn't write nothing down again. It's gonna say 66, but oh my goodness, it's 1960. Nine, how does it? I guess they weren't that they must have skipped a year. It threw me off. All right, so that's 1969. So this is probably 19. Number four is probably 1968. The Battle of the Bulge took place in 19. I mean, uh, the movie came out in 1965. I went to see that in downtown. Uh, I talked about that. And number three. They're all pretty nice grades, too. D Day, nine. Oh, 1966. Right on the cover, number two, 1966. Hmm. I thought D Day was 1941. No, 1940. I don't know when it was. Maybe it was 1965 or 66. And number one, 1965. All the king sizers. Nice Jack Kirby artwork on all those covers. Uh, Justice League, and I think it's the first appearance of this schmuck here. 
And I think I might have shown this. I don't know. The Keymaster, again, didn't write nothing. They put 6.0 here. I don't know. If it, it looks like a nice 6.0. Um, should I take it out or not? I don't know. No, I'm not going to take it out. I think it's... Uh, I think it could be, uh, if I remember right, Mike Sikowski was on the artwork here. 19, 1966 or 1965. Lois Lane. Uh, and Superman the Commodore. Lois Lane the Queen and Superman the Commodore. 1967. I mean... Number 67 from, hmm, here's another one, another copy that I haven't rebagged and boarded yet. I think it's from 66. Whoever I bought this from put 67 in there. I don't know if that's... I'm pretty sure this is 1966, and I got to rebag and board this thing anyway. So. Nineteen sixty-six. It is nineteen sixty-six. August nineteen sixty-six. What has he got in nineteen sixty-seven? Oh, wait a minute. It's number sixty-seven from. 1966. It's very confusing, you know. Oh, well, let's put that in a new bag and board. Superman in bondage, about to get his head cut off. <laughs> that goes into the mylar. Look at that beautiful high definition. I always try to make it get the glare out of there, you know. Some of the guys on YouTube they just go like this. See that? See it? Yeah, yeah. That's a nice copy, huh? Look at all that glare, yeah. What happens to the scissor? Oh. Cut the edges off. Oh, I got a note on the back of this board. How did I do that? Bestine, solvent and trimmer I put on there. That has nothing to do with the book. I think that was a note for me um, to research this product, which you can use to take tape off your comic. It's There's fast evaporation, so it doesn't leave any stains, kind of like Goo Gone which I have been using, and it works, it doesn't leave stains, but this stuff, Bestine, Solvit, and Thinner might be a lot better for taking tape off of your books, but I'm not suggesting you do that, you, and if you do, just be careful, do it lightly, practice on a really old, worthless book, and if you if you got a book that's ready for the garbage, put some tape on it. And leave it on there a couple of days and then try to solve it. Here's another copy. Why did I? Well, you know, I must have got these really cheap. And anytime they're cheap, like a dollar, two dollars, I just pick them up, whether I realize I have them or not. Even if I know I have them, I just do it. Lois Lane Giant number 77. Um, again, I didn't write nothing on the back of this. But I think, I think, I think this is the first, the, they have the story in here of her first uh, appearance in Lois Lane number one, The Witch, The Witch of Manhattan, I think it was called, was it the Manhattan Witches? No, The Witch of Metropolis. 
Where did I get Manhattan from? <laughs> anyway. Story of her first appearance in Lois Lane number one. I mean, not her first appearance. Her first appearance was way back in action number one. This is uh, in her own magazine, her own series. Wow, there's hardly any ads in this one. Huh. And the back cover, of course, there it is. Here's the obligatory uh, ad for Palisades Park. Yes, lovely, lovely. I used to, oh, this is, oh, shit, this cover is loose. Where am I dreaming? No. <laughs> the cover is loose. It looks like I'm going to have to put, uh, do something to get it back in. I wonder, you know, here's, here's a note in here, hey, thanks, Shane, fine, those bastards, they didn't tell me it was, that the cover was uh, off, literally, I mean, here, let me show you. It wasn't stapled uh, through the cover, so I may I may have to put some glue and glue it back on the inside of the spine. That's a shame. Oh well. And this one I bought off of eBay a while ago. Darn it, get in there. 18 bucks I paid for it. That included the shipping, by the by. What the hell? Oh, that's the wrong bag, no wonder. Let's get one of these uh, acid-free buffer bags. <laughs> Lois Lane, what a character. I think that... The TV show... Um, Noel uh, Neal, who played... Uh, Lois Lane, she was really terrific in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking a lot about that song, There'll Never Be Another You, by the original Seekers, with uh, Judy Durham. She died earlier uh, last month. And then Olivia Newton John. I never cared too much for her music. I liked it, but not enough to, you know, buy the actual music. I did later on buy the music, but not at the time when it was coming out. I don't know why. I just never really got into it. But I liked her. You know, but she was all right. Um. Lois Lane, uh, this is a Dick Giordano cover from 1977, no, 71, sorry, look at that, he's being tied up by all the Justice Leaguers, look at this, oh my goodness. Can you believe I got this thing for five bucks? Five bucks at my comic shop? 
from 1955. Because it was in pretty bad shape, the cover was off, detached, and uh, I taped it back together with archival mending tissue. And uh, it had a bunch of old tape on the back cover. A whole bunch of this old, the real old plastic scotch tape. I removed it with the goo gone. I don't know if you can tell. I can still smell it, to tell you the truth. And no stains or nothing. Um, interior pages are all there. They're nice. Cream, the off-white. Or off-white, the cream. And, uh, I just taped it, you know, I taped it. You probably can't see it. Oh, there, you can probably see it, see it there. It was in pretty rough shape, so I said for five bucks, I'm not going to pass this up. I got a nice, you know, copy now to read and keep in my collection. It's... Certainly worth the five bucks, and I'm getting more and more into going to the small conventions and buying at different comic stores because we do have quite a few comic stores around here. You don't have to pay for shipping, you don't have to pay taxes like you do on eBay. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Here's Bronco Bill. Um, from the uh, uh, Robert Schaefer pedigree collection. Nine oh nine West Seventh Street in Saint Paul two Minnesota. What does the two mean? Saint Paul two could don't tell me that was a zip code. Would one number at that time? Hmm. Maybe. Bronco Bill. 1948, I think this was. Um, you know, I can't get any information on who did the cover, but I keep thinking it looks like Alex Schoenberg. Uh, he uh, did most, most uh, well, a lot of his covers were airbrushed. He was a master at doing that. But it kind of looks like Alex Schoenberg artwork. Not sure. Then we got Western cameras. I paid five dollars for this from nineteen fifty one. This is a uh, uh, number twenty five. Not bad. Not bad for five dollars. And this is something that I. Uh, was it on eBay? Yeah, I won this on eBay with another book for five dollars, and I think uh, it was I'm pretty sure it was this book, and I know I showed you this book, but uh, this is from 1961. Charlton Comic, Sheriff of Tombstone. Nice higher grade comic book I don't see anything uh, to indicate the uh, heavy creasing or uh, staining so what it looks like to me and I know I showed you that and then this I th I think what I pay for this, I think seven dollars on uh, eBay. This is straight arrow uh, number 45. There's some pencil mark, somebody tried to cross out the number 45 and the code. Magazine Enterprises. Magazine Enterprises. 
moving right along. Here is a book that I believe I showed this on Graphic Man, but I, I can't recall. And I don't know where I, if I showed it or not because of what happened to me with those other two videos shutting down. And, um, so I might have showed this before, but uh, Eric Breen. This is for Eric Breen. He loves these. He's a, a sap for the old romance books. High school romance. Yeah, Eric Breen was able to get a really nice collection of, uh, I don't know if it was from his store or another store where he worked, um, but, I mean, not his store that he owns, a, a store where he works, or if it was from a different store that he visited, uh, but he got uh, a whole bunch of romance comics, and I think he only paid like two or three dollars a piece it was just unbelievable and he was showing these just amazing deal that he got but anyway this is from uh, 1953 the cover by Lee Elias let's see here Any, uh, story inside here is called there's one story called love affair with pencils by jack sparling jack sparling worked for dc doing uh he did the house of mystery and he might have done some other stuff i don't know i um i think he did stuff for gold key I thought there was a name on the cover. There's not. So that's pretty neat. I always love a little romance, you know. There's nothing wrong with it. And these were half price. Again, I'm sorry if I showed these already somehow, somewhere, but $6 Sergeant Fury, number 21. Got to rebag and board these. Five bucks, Sergeant Fury 18. From the comic store. Four dollars, number 54. Dick Ayers and John Severin. I think, uh, John Severn was responsible for working on some of those uh, annuals, too, that I showed. Uh, Sergeant Fury, 25, 750 I paid. Six dollars. Sergeant Fury, 22. Don't turn your back on Bull McGivney. Don't. Turn your back on Bull McGivney. Oh. Then I picked up uh, one of these magazines. I wonder. Oh, where's that bag at? I had a bag here. Where is that old bag? some stuff in here too shit I didn't even know that was in there yeah. you know I collect uh, small cars matchbook you know uh, matchbox and uh, Johnny Lightning 34 Chevy Master Coupe. Cool. 
paid a dollar for this. One thin dollar. And here's some magazines that I picked up. The current magazine, September Alter Ego. And uh, Retro Retro Fan. Surf's, surf's Up 60s Beach Movies. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. I used to go to see those movies at the Music Box in Chicago. Southport Avenue. We lived uh, right there in the Lakeview neighborhood. Oh, look at there's a car magazine. I mean, a uh, cartoons. I think that's basically a modeling uh, model uh, magazine and. Also, uh, dedicated to models and, and real cars as well. These cartoons. Speaking of the word cartoon, you know, I think that comes from the French originally, and it means um, uh, pasteboard. Pasteboard on which they drew that was called cartoons and I think that's where we got the name Carton from because the original cartons were made out of cardboard and That's my understanding I think Correct me if I'm wrong, but I Don't have any of these magazines here, but uh, I wish I did What else has got in here? It's got uh, retro fans. Too much TV. Oh, you can never get enough of this old television. Are you kidding me? Look at the the, the black actress. I don't you know. I don't mean to say anything, but you can't see any. You can't see the details. I don't even know what she looks like. Looks like she has a, a blank face. <laughs> It's, it's got to be the lighting here. I mean, let me see if I can. There we go. Goodness gracious. What did I, I had it like this. You couldn't see anything. There. Who is she? Anyway, um, she looks familiar. What did she do? Oh, man. I don't know. Don't know. My apologies, but I just don't know. Anyway, oh, this is going to be great. This is uh, Wild Wild West. That was one of my favorite TV shows back in 1966, 67. Man. Never missed one of these shows. Not one. Even got my parents to, to, to start watching it. Michael Dunn, which was not his real name. What was his real name? This is Michael Dunn. He's the guy that played Dr. Loveless on the Wild Wild West. Gary Gary Miller. His real name was Gary Miller, but his stage name was Michael Dunn. Um, the Wild Wild West. Man, was that ever a great show. Here you see some other things that he did. He was, uh, I don't know, how do I say it? One of the little people, a, a midget. I don't know if that's the, I don't think it's derogatory. That's not the way I mean it, but he was great. He became a very beloved character on the Wild Wild West. What else we got here? The Wild Wild West revisited. And then, of course, there is a, um, Oh, 
this is this this is going on on more Doctor Loveless. Um, Ross Martin was great playing uh, Artemis Gordon, and then he had a heart attack and. He was replaced by some other guys for a, a while, and then he came back, I think, and did a, maybe a few episodes, and appeared in one of the movies, and he had another heart attack, and he was really, he was gone. Michael Conrad, who played James West, I heard he was, cried like a baby when he heard that, you know, Ross Martin had died. So, oh... Surfs. The surfs up with Annette Funicello and Frankie Avalon. And we got Rat Fink and Surf Fink. And we got uh, the Beach Boys, right? Jan and Dean. And man, those were the days. And all those crazy uh, Dr. Goldfoot. And the bikini machine, how to stuff a wild bikini, bikini beach, beach blanket bingo. Eric Van Zipper. Leader of the rats, R A T Z. Leather jacket biker gang. That there he is right there. I didn't even see it. <laughs> he was so cool, man. Harvey Lembeck. Uh, and you know what else was cool in those movies, man? The Woodies. Like this. These surf rods, as they call them, has got the uh, surfboards on top of the roof of the car. Oh man, these are so great! And then here's another one to go along with uh, that retro magazine. What a beauty, man. Huh. Just beautiful. Oh, I live for this stuff. I love it. Isn't that great looking? Let me show the other one too a little bit closer. I didn't show it that close. And uh, I just happen to have this in the back too. This is a Universal Mod, uh, Studios, the Wolf. The Wolf Man. The Wolf Man Van. 76 Ford van. This down here is the cover for it. I have a bunch of these. I got the Frankenstein and then the mummies and then Dracula and some other ones. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yes, indeed I do. So if you can. Oh, look what else they got here. The Adventures of Zorro. I, re I think 
You know, I, re I don't remember the cartoon too much, but I do remember the TV series, and I loved it. So that's going to be nice to uh, read that article. Tomorrow's, you know, they publish a lot of great stuff. Uh, it's, um... It's just crazy, though, how expensive they get now, you know. It's uh, $11. But it's worth it to me because I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. And if I have the extra money, I'm buying it, you know. So there's that. And, uh, of course, Alter Ego. If you're into comics... A real chemist collector will always pick up an alter ego every now and then. Look at that. 70 years before the masthead. D.C. Hillman, Ziff Davis, Fox, Harvey, St. John, Charlton. Oh yeah, Marvel. Pick it up telling you pick it up and if they don't if your comic shop doesn't have it they can order it and if you are if you're a regular customer maybe you're one of those guys that gets a discount on it as well and if they don't want to get it or they can't get it go online go to tomorrow's but you have to pay more you're gonna gotta pay shipping and then you gotta pay tax and all right well anyway so i showed these sergeant furious okay so i gotta get them out of the way i don't show it again uh all right i still got a few more. i know i showed this betty page a little bit of a naughty cover every now and then doesn't hurt you know And it's not, it's naughty, but nice cover. And I know I showed these. So that's going to go there. Um... There was something else here. I have to search for something. Hey, I think I'm gonna get back to uh, back to this magazine for a moment because it's got all of the surf and the '60s uh, beach party uh, theme, beach beach party movie theme going on. Um, I forgot about these here from 1966. That was my big year. I mean, I just became so enthralled with everything that had to do with American pop culture. It was just, it just was just blowing my mind. I loved it. So, this is going back to the 1966 Batman TV show. And there they are, they're surfing, you know. We got the theme going on in here. So that's kind of cool. And here's another... Uh, uh, Archie and DC crossover event. I mean, yeah, Archie DC crossover. This is number three. This is a, a, a variant. Archie meets Batman, 1966. This came out in um, a few years ago. Uh, what's it? 20, 2018, November 2018, October, November, so this was like uh, September more or less, end of summer, these were fun to read, but uh, the covers were okay, but I mean the artwork was not, you know, Nothing to write home about, that's for damn sure. 
There's some of the artwork from that series way back in 2018. I think there was a six issue series, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was a six issue mini series. Well, at any rate, um, And there wasn't much substance to it. I mean, you know, I, I, yeah, you know, it's just, I don't know. I think they could have did a better job on the artwork and then some of the, add some more dialogue, give it some depth. Yeah. I know a man, Bear Pig, I was watching his video uh a couple of his videos uh yesterday i was watching a couple of his videos and um he was mentioning he likes the uh he's more of an art guy he likes that more i'm starting to look like that guy man where am i at like that um uh, but i like to i like to be a lot of words not taken over he showed some of the uh ec books uh, reprints and by god i mean used the page after page of bull word balloons so much reading was almost like picking up a paperback so that was a little bit much but i still would enjoy it because it gives you a lot of story you know and that's what i like i like to read i like to read the stories man and I like the artwork. I gotta put tape on these. I hate doing it, but sometimes you got to keep that flap from going all over the damn place. So that's what I just wanted to show you. These two to go with that theme. Now. Oh, I've got the Satana there. There. Go away. DC Sup Superstars of Magic. This was number 11. I don't have the issue handy right now. I do have it, but I just did some reworking on it to get rid of that barcode. And I turned it into a poster. Nice 11 by 17. Not exactly 11 by 17, but I turned that into a poster. Nice for Halloween. And here is a special. I think. Oh, this is very nice. Yeah. Look at this was the uh, I think her first appearance in an annual or something. Maybe it's, it's there's her first solo all issue solo. I, I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. Zatanna special number one. Oh, look at this. This is oh man, Green Morrow. It's not green, man. Where is it? The signature, it sure looks like some of his great artwork here. Oh, darn it. It almost looks like it spells Gray Morocco. Very nice. Artwork is nice. I mean, this is something you can collect because I don't think that they're that expensive. I really don't. 
Let's take a look here. Just for the hell of it. For the halibut. I had some halibut today. That's why I said that. I had fish for supper. Um... Bear with me for a moment. It's not my, my own curiosity. No, they're not that. You can get one with free shipping and high grade for 15 bucks. You can get an. Oh, yeah. Yeah, about fourteen dollars. Yeah, that's just that's just about the going price, you know. Oh, here's one idiot. I don't know if you can read that. Fifty nine ninety five, sixty dollars or best offer. And there's one for seven dollars and ten cents high grade. Uh, prices are all over the place. There's gouging going on, but average price is about fifteen bucks and well worth it. So now that I've did that, that's gotta go over there too. And uh Well, I'm going to leave it at that, I guess. I don't want to get too, uh, well, what the hell. I picked this up, Amazing uh, Fantasy 1000. <laughs> I mean, how do they, uh, I don't know. Anything to sell a book, I guess. But I don't know how they got to uh, Amazing Fantasy 1000. It only went up to 15, and then there was another series of Amazing Fantasy, and I don't know how far they went. The Volume 2 of Amazing Fantasy, Issue 15, had that guy that was... Uh, uh, what the hell's his name? That character who became uh, sidekick of the Hulk, and then... Also had a became, also attained Hulk powers later on. I'm not exactly thrilled with the artwork. I mean, come on. Not for that story, at any rate. Artwork does not thrill me for that story. Second step was uh, just some guy, Michael Cho and Anthony Falcon, art by Michael Cho. Well, you ain't no Frank Cho. Then there's this, the second story. Much better artwork there. Amazing artwork. And let's see. Who's responsible for that amazing artwork? Oh, here they got uh, Ramos, Sabino, Scott. Sometimes they have the credits in the front and then sometimes in the back. It's all over the place. Hey, dislike that. Second story, third story. Artwork is. Uh, well, I don't know.
What the hell has she got on her belly there? A pregnant woman. So, I don't know, it's kind of a mix. Some of the art is nice, some of it isn't. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know, but... Um, yeah. It was an impulse buy. It was right there. An impulse buy. Well then, I guess that's going to be it for today. Hmm. What happened to my duck? I hope I didn't swallow you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Naughty little duke. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I hope to see you all soon again. Until then, take care, and be well. Yeah.